Hey team, Chef Eric Gephardt here. Happy holidays and I hope you're well. Uh, it's time to go ahead and rock and roll with the star of the table. That is, oh, the Thanksgiving turkey, okay? I got this beauty, that's probably about a 12 to 13 pounder uh, the other day. It took me about three days to, to slack out, so this was not a, a fresh turkey. Uh, if you get a frozen one, give yourself about three days. Uh, and I'm gonna do it on the Jotisserie today. So you might have seen earlier on the week we showed the butter gravy turkey. Uh, you can go back and look at that. That's the spatchcock version. One of my favorite ways to do a turkey on a Kamada Joe. But today we're gonna use the Kamada Joe Jotisserie and we're gonna spend, everybody's heard of the Nashville hot chicken. Well, we're gonna do the Hillsboro hot turkey, okay? Uh, two ingredients for this marinade, nothing crazy. Your favorite hot sauce. Uh, I'm gonna use Frank's Red Hot today. Bullard's Louisiana is also a, uh, a great option, but today we're using two parts Frank's Red Hot to one part Dale's steak seasoning. And if you can get the reduced sodium, go for that. Uh, this is also a play on one of my favorite chicken wings uh, called the Boss. So this could also be the Boss Turkey. Uh, all right, so again, two parts Frank's Red Hot, uh, one part Dale's. Let's go ahead and start mixing that up. And before, oh, before we do, make sure you get all the... You don't want to roast that guy with all the goods in there, okay? So we'll take that out. And don't forget to take out that little turkey popper as well. Nothing like a little plastic over the hot flames. All right, two parts Frank's Red Hot. This is gonna be a three hour brine. Let's do one quart Frank's. And don't overthink this team, really don't. I guess that was one quart. Now we'll go in with half a quart of the Dales. Again, two to one ratio. And you're just gonna agitate this, you know, every, every 10 or 15 minutes. It's only a three hour marinade. And look how it's already ready adhering. You know, no worries with this stuff. It's so potent and so powerful. No worries about seasoning under the skin or anything like that. So this is gonna look like a dry brine in the end. It's gonna have a very dark appearance. Notice how dark it is already from the Dales. Um, that's gonna look like a dry brine roast. Dry brine roast, I don't even know what that is. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> So it's gonna look like it's a dry rub turkey. It's gonna have a nice dark, even complexion. And that rotisserie, the jotisserie, is gonna help it have that even color all the way around. So uh, again, every 15 minutes or so, check back. We're gonna take this and put it under refrigeration and continue to agitate it for that three hours. So this is about a three hour cook. And I'm telling you right now, that's almost too much charcoal, okay? We lose a little bit of uh, control over our airflow when we use the jotisserie, because as I close this, uh, over here, there's, there's a divot where the, the spit rod comes through. Well, airflow can go in and out of that. So if you overload your charcoal box, chances are you're gonna, you're gonna overshoot your temperature just by a little bit. So I suggest go ahead and start your fire about an hour early uh, let the grill ceramic come to temperature, and then when you put that bird in and you're stabilized at your 300 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you're on your way down, and you've got a small uh, bank of charcoal towards the back. I'll show you what I mean. Come on and take a look at what we've got in here right now. Uh, everybody's involved. It's starting to ember up. Uh, I've got a grill temp right now of 350 degrees, and let's go ahead and get this bird trussed up three hours on the nose and we've got a great Hillsboro hot turkey um, good coloration here you know sometimes they come ripped right there out of the bag and I wish they didn't but that's okay we're gonna run with it I don't need all this excessive skin here but it will shrink back a little bit so let's cut about half of that neck skin back and I'm gonna take the excess marinade and we're going to use that for our basting. Beautiful. Uh, you're going to start with a little butcher twine, even on both sides, and slide right underneath that tail piece and the uh, legs here. Now the idea of trussing is it's going to bring everything tight and it's going to be easier on the bird throughout the rotisserie process, but it's also closing in this air gap. And that's part of the reason why I really enjoy a spatchcock turkey is because it takes out that air gap completely. 
you also see uh, people stuffing the cavity full of like apples and oranges and onions and uh, well stuffing. Uh, but today we're just gonna we're just gonna tot this up as good as we can. And I'm gonna start because it's gonna be a rotisserie. This is a modified truss. We're gonna tie a little knot around that tail. Okay, also known as the Pope's nose. And then we're gonna come underneath those legs and we're gonna cross. We're gonna go over and loop under, over and loop under. And that's gonna allow us, now it, this is really important, uh, no matter what method you use for trussing, never put the rope over the breast meat because then as it cooks, you get this weird line, okay? So use the natural lines of the birds. I'm gonna come in right there and that's gonna also help hold this skin over the breast meat. And there's a fat content in that skin, so it's gonna actually help keep a moister breast there, okay? So now we're gonna come across. Uh, let's put a little half Nelson on these wings. And again, we're gonna come right in the middle there, making sure we're on either side of that breast, and we're gonna flip the bird. Boom, just like that. Now we've got the bird sitting up. We're gonna tie our knot just on the back side of the spinal region, right where the neck would have gone. And we're gonna use the butcher's knot, right? Go over once, go over twice. And with a, with a nice wet rope like that, that's really gonna hold. And that's what you wanna hear. Let me trim. That's what you want to see. Anything you know why we trust turkeys? Because we don't trust lawyers. Ah, <laughs> I knew it was something horrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're, we're sitting at, at three hundo and our fire's on the dying side, right? We're not adding more charcoal to it. This is a beautiful thing. Let's go ahead and run the spit through the turkey. Uh, notice there's a square end and a pointed end here. Uh, you're going to want to cheat a little bit to the side of the pointed end because this bit here has to go into the motor. So if we were trying to get exactly center, we'd be a little closer to one side. And I'll show you that here in a minute. And we're just gonna sneak right through. And I'm gonna do something interesting here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this rotisserie right through that tail or that Pope's nose. Just a little positive pressure and we're through, okay? Now you've got a couple options here with the tines. You've got too long and too short. I like the long to go into the sides of the breast meat and I'm gonna sneak them underneath that skin. And that's gonna help deter the skin from ripping while, uh, while we're spinning this bird. I'll show you, just like that. Next, we're gonna use these two pieces and we're gonna come in, not up and down, we're gonna come into come in through the side. And I wanna show you that. See how I'm coming right back in there. And I really wanna tighten this up. Now, as this bird cooks, it is gonna uh, uh, shrink a little bit. So about halfway through, we'll push these back on and re-tighten. Now I'm just tightening down the screws. And before I tighten this one down, I'm gonna make sure and push. All right. We're trussed up, now to get it in the grill, and all we have to do is slide that square hole into the motor and we're spinning. Make sure your bird is centered, not too close to either side or too close to the coals. Should be good to go. Tines look good, not a lot of movement here. It's not flopping around. I feel good about that. Remember, it's gonna get more tender as it cooks. So uh, we wanna make sure that we've got tines in the right place. This is looking great. It's not too close to either side. Uh, we're going to close the lid now and go ahead and build our basting brush, which I love these little basting brushes, okay? It is as close to adult arts and crafts as we get, yeah? I've got some fun herbs here that you think of when you think of Thanksgiving and the holidays. I've got sage, rosemary, and thyme. It's as easy as you think. You go down to the uh, 
to the end and you tie yourself a little first part of your, your shoelace knot. You're gonna make a square knot or a granny knot, whatever you like, and then you do it one more time. We're not gonna start this until about halfway through the cook, but come on, let's go ahead and do a sneak peek. We're gonna use some of that excess marinade and we're gonna drip those herbs right into it as if they were a paintbrush. Now we're gonna see our turkey doing its thing and just have some fun with it. This is the magic of Thanksgiving. But again, I don't wanna to put too many layers on until about an hour and a half into this cook. This is gonna be about a three hour cook at 300 degrees with a, let's call it a 13 pound bird. And as those drippings start to hit that little pile of charcoal, that smoke comes out. So I'm not using wood chips or chunks on this. I'm using the drippings of the brine or marinade and the turkey itself to create smoke. You're gonna see an amazing smoke ring on this turkey, but not from wood chunks or chips, just from the drippings and caramelization coming up. See this smoke right here? Natural driven, I love it. We're at an hour and a half right now. And look at that, we're already starting to get the joints right where we want them. I tell you, there's almost no better way to cook a bird than a jotisserie, but it is a fact there's no more fun way to cook a bird <laughs> than a jotisserie. Look at this. Um, so at this point, we're gonna take our basting brush that we made together, and we're gonna start doing exactly what you wanna do. And this is where we start building layers and levels of complexity. Uh, even though there's only two ingredients, every time we put a layer on, it's gonna roast and caramelize and dry, and then we're gonna continue putting more and more lacquered layers on. All right, team, so I'm gonna continue to baste and baste this turkey, and it gets me an excuse to get outside every now and again too, which is a, is a healthy thing, let me tell you. Uh, so we've got this baby, rotating we're sitting at 300 degrees fahrenheit i think this total cook time is going to be about three hours so uh in about 20 minutes i'll jump back in and continue to base but we'll check back at uh we'll check back at two hours and 45 minutes we are ready and look at those wings beautiful rendering excellent crust crispy skin i am super excited about this bird the trussing held up wonderfully and again note how we've got that spit rod right through the Pope's nose don't forget about those oysters right there this is a great way to talk about the anatomy of a bird it's just rolling around for us you know it couldn't be any better I've learned the hard way you need to turn the motor off if you're gonna get a good temperature read you don't want to be chasing your arm the whole time okay we're at 162 I'm not worried about that we gotta get to 165 so 162 is perfect it's gonna carry over let's check the leg and the thigh 172. Beautiful. This bird is done and perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it off, put it on the cutting board, and we're going to let this rest just like you would a nice cut of beef or a nice cut of pork. We're going to let this turkey rest for about, I'd say, 20 minutes. What we want to do now is unscrew the, uh, the little tines, the forks, and we're going to slide that spit rod right through. And notice how the skin has draped around, okay? I want to be careful. I'm going to make a little slit right here because I don't want to rip that skin, okay? And notice how it's going to pull clean through. Beauty. Now for the other side. All right, now that we've got the forks out, let's go ahead and cut the trussing rope. And remember, we took it right down the alleyways here so we don't have any lines running through the breast meat. That's what we want to see. God, this bird is stunning. I mean, Nathan, the aroma's coming off of this thing right now. Oh yeah, you need to hurry up so we can eat it. Yes, chef. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is take off the leg and thigh portion. But we wanna make sure we don't uh, lose a lot of that skin on the breast. So I pull it slightly. You can see how it's taut there. And then just ever so gently with the knife, trace right down. Same thing on the other side. 
And nature has an amazing way of just giving us a road map, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is kind of pop those hip bones at a joint. And it just pulls right off. Ah, oh, so good. Look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Get rid of that tail, nobody wants that. Uh, if you like, go ahead and separate the thigh from the, uh, the leg. You can see, I'll show you on this one. We want to go right in between the two joints. And we've got a beautiful leg there. And a thigh, what I call a thigh plus here. We got some of that back meat in there as well, which is why it looks a little bit different than you'd normally see, but we've got some... Uh, You've got that oyster in there. Oh, just gorgeous. All right, same thing here, except this time we'll, we'll cut from the top. We're just going to come right there. All right, two legs, two thigh plus. Now we can either come at the arms from the side here, cutting through the joint and releasing and we've got a beautiful I'll just prop that up there beautiful wing or you could carve this breast off and leave the wing on I prefer that method that we just did um, so let's go ahead and show that one more time again a little positive pressure up and notice how there isn't any red in these joints and that tells us that we got that temperature up to at least 170 degrees that redness disappears. Oh, team. This is out of control. Next, I'm gonna, I could stand this up. I'm just gonna take that backbone out. And this is the spinal region with all the ribs. Uh, you know, we could pick that clean. There's some good meat on there. So we'll definitely, we'll definitely save that. All right, so now all we have is the breast meat. In the middle of this breast meat is a keel bone. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the left and then to the right uh, of that keel bone, which runs right down the center. And you're going to make sure and come through that skin right there because that is beautiful stuff. We, the jotisserie, I was going to say we worked hard, the jotisserie worked hard to get that skin for us. And we're going to use the knife and just kind of kick it over just like that. And then trace, trace that rib cage. Uh, let's get one more cut to go and again, this is the keel bone here, so we want to get to the right of that. It's hard not to take a bite of this right now, isn't it, Nathan? Oh, yeah. You know, it smells amazing, but I, I don't really smell hot sauce. Yeah, the more you think about when you do, uh, uh, like, roasted jalapeno poppers, you know, when you, when you cook some of, these, some, of the, some of this heat, the heat dissipates. And, you know, it is not too spicy for kiddos. Um, you just get all that big, bold flavor. You don't get much of the heat. And notice I'm not serving a sauce with this today. Um, so if you were really into or wanted to look for that hot sauce, you could, you could make a sauce up that's got, that's got some heat to it, okay? And I love the fact that we've got so much moisture in this bird. It just, it just also kind of tells me that the leftovers even day two, day three, and day four, uh, if there are any of this bird, are gonna be absolutely exceptional. Nathan. <laughs> oh, don't throw me with a good can time. You try, can you try that? It's bold. Whoa. Right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, you know, we could of course make gravy from all the great bones in the carcass that we saved. It is roasted, um, but that is, that's, that's how it's done. Is that, that's how they... <laughs> I don't want to say that because everybody's got their own traditions, but if you're locked in to the same bird that you've done, because that's the way your mama did it, because that's the way your daddy did it, then tradition is a beautiful thing, right? This is a time for tradition, but I would also suggest perhaps do a second bird uh, day of or even the week before or week after uh, this is a fantastic option for you uh, again we're, we're coining this because Nashville hot chicken so fun we're coining this the Hillsboro hot turkey 
uh, and I can't thank y'all enough for hanging out with us today. This has been an absolute blast watching this thing spin on the Jotisserie. If you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed shooting it, uh, do me a favor, subscribe, like, and comment. And folks, most importantly, have a happy holiday. Cheers. From my backyard to yours. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. We gotta eat. Food on the mind.